first thing uh, I would like to do um, is introduce uh, Ray Owensby. Ray is, uh, serves as a commissioner on the uh, Dubuque County Veterans Commission and um, does stellar work for our veterans in this community. And I've asked Ray to come up and join us and lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. <laughs> so if everyone would rise, please move your caps. All right, Ray. I pledge, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Ray. Thank you, Ray. And for an old guy, he's not a bad golfer. <laughs> Ray, did you hear that? <laughs> okay. We have uh, the next item on the agenda is public comments. At this time, anyone may address the board on matters which are on the agenda. Please go to the podium and state your name and home address. And what that would be is if there's something on here that you would like to comment on, uh, now's the time you can, you can go to the podium and approach it. Um, I think when we get to the um, uh, resolution on the Martin Luther King uh, Jr. birthday holiday, I think that'll be, uh, there'll be a time there for folks to come to the podium and, and talk about that. Um, so, but if there's other items, and then if you're here for a zoning case or anything like that, uh, that would you can wait until that comes up. But other than that, anything on the agenda, this is for uh, an, an opportunity for public comments for things that are on the agenda. Okay, seeing none, we'll go to uh, uh, normally item number one is proclamations. I don't believe we have any uh, today, so uh, I would. Uh, go for uh, item number three, which is consent items. And today we have a uh, liquor license for Thunder Hills Country Club. I think uh, the auditor wants your back up to minutes. Oh, oh, I'm sorry, thank you. All right, I missed one. On item minutes. number two, approval of minutes of the meeting <clears throat> of November 25, 2019. Motion to approve as presented. And I will second that. Okay. Motion made and seconded to approve the Minutes uh, of the November 25th meeting. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Thank you. Okay, consent items. Item number three, liquor license for Thunder Hills Country Club. I'll make a motion to approve. Second. Okay, motion made and seconded to approve the consent item. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Aye, carried. Uh, procurement procedures, I don't believe we have any. We have um, item number five, which is uh, public hearing. Motion to approve the proof of publication. And I will second that. Okay. All right. Motion made and seconded to approve the proof of publication. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All right. We have a notice of public hearing for the courthouse elevator modernization project. Any. I didn't know if you were going to have Chris explain the project yeah. at all, or you just want to open Chris up the public here. hearing, or? This oh, it's is the, notice. the notice. My bad. My right. bad. Just the notice. Yeah. I'll make a motion to approve the notice of public hearing. Okay, Second. thank you. And Mary, what's the date of that? Uh, January 2nd. January 2nd, thank you. All right, January 2nd, notice of public hearing for the uh, courthouse elevator modernization project. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Carried. All right, we do have a public hearing. Uh, item number 5C, public hearing amendment to ZC number 11-29-19, Kenneth and Darla Hush, A1 Agricultural to A2 Agricultural Residential. And we'll turn it over to uh, our zoning administrator, Tammy Henry and Angie Stafford. She would be able to learn what we do. Absolutely. Okay? <laughs> it was there just a second ago. I 
had it on and that went off. Well, there it's back on. There we go. Okay. All right. Sorry about that. Okay. Um, this is for zoning case 1129 of 19 for Kenneth and Darla Hosh. The applicants are requesting to rezone from A1 Agricultural to A2 Agricultural Residential 1.44 acres to be allowed to separate the home and the farm buildings to sell to their son so he can continue to assist in the farming operation. The property is located 0 0.05 miles south of the city of Piasta along Sundown Road and is legally described as Lot 1 of Hosh Place, Section 16, T88 North, R1E, Vernon Township, Dubuque County, Iowa. The property is owned by Kenneth and Darla Hosh. Zoning in the area includes A1 Agriculture to the south, the east, and the west, B1 Business Highway to the south, the B1 Business Highway to the south on zoning case number 931 of 16 um, was to allow for a beauty shop. There were no special use permits attached to this property. There are no previous rezoning cases attached to this property. Three rezoning notification letters were sent to the property owners in the city of Piasta was notified. Comprehensive Plan Chapter 9, Agriculture and Natural Resources, page 134, Objective 3.1, and Chapter 8 Housing, page 122, Objective 12.7 may apply to this case. So what we have here is they're coming in to this section. They're going to plat this off and rezone in this area. This is the B1 business that was approved, and that's the hair salon that's out in, in Piasta or just outside of Piasta. So what they're actually going to rezone is around the farmhouse and the buildings. But eventually they will be platting this piece, which is next. They'll plat this piece for the sun to have that as well. And this will show you the buildings we're talking about and the area. There's no questions. I'll make a motion to open up the public hearing. Second. <clears throat> I'm sorry. Motion second. made and seconded. Let's open the public hearing. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Is there anyone here to speak on the public hearing? Behavior. Here he's got he's to speak. <laughs> Nobody wants to speak. I was thinking Is when the thing went blank, you could just come up here and recite this by memory. Recognize Dave Schneider. Dave Schneider. Uh, Schneider Land Survey, 906 First Street North, Farley, Iowa. I don't think I can call it. Uh, not yet. Anyway, um, basically working with uh, uh, Ken and Darla, they they bought this old, this house was acquired when they bought the farm ground. Uh, obviously, they went through the rezoning. They have two daughters running that uh, commercial business just to the south of there that I think went through two, three years ago. Yep. Mm -hmm. right. And uh, the daughters have been living in this old farmhouse. It's an old stone house. Uh, and uh, apparently they don't anymore. They got married, whatever. And now their son is going to purchase it from them and, uh, and continue to live there, I guess. Um, and, yeah, no real plans on any changes to the way it looks out there. Just trying to get it split off, put it in his name, and let him build some equity, I guess. He does help him with farm operation. Ken farms quite a bit of ground. I know he said he had five, 600 acres of beans. And, when I was working on this, so and I don't know how much corn he has on top of that. So, but uh, so yeah, that's that's basically what their intent is here. And I think they also realize that this is probably going to be in Piasta at some point, and uh, this old house and these buildings at some point probably are going to end up disappearing. So, thanks, Dave. Tammy, I had a question. Was this part of our? Uh, was this one of our uh, first home business? Uh, ones or am I no. confusing it with yeah. another you're can you're confusing that with one of our home-based businesses yeah so they actually did a rezoning and that was done in 16 to allow for that beauty shop. okay all right any other comments anyone else under the, want to comment under the public hearing hearing none I'll make a motion to close the public hearing second motion made and seconded to close the public hearing Back to the supervisors. I'll make a motion to approve the rezoning request. Second. Okay. Motion made and seconded to approve the rezoning. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 I'll make a motion to suspend the requirement that this amendment be considered and voted on for passage at two prior meetings. Second. Motion made and seconded to suspend the requirement that the uh, amendment be uh, considered for, and voted on at two prior meetings. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Carried 3-0. 
I'll make a motion that this amendment be adopted and that the zoning administrator be directed to enter the appropriate changes in the official zoning map and that the auditor be directed to arrange for the publication of the amendment and portion of the official zoning map as amended in the official county newspaper as required by law. Second. Okay. Motion made and second to approve the rezoning. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Carried three to zero. Thank you. Oop, she's up next. Okay. Right up. Up here. Number six, approval of plats. Resolution, final plat, Hush Place, Plat 2, Section 2, Vernon Township. Okay. So this property is owned by Kenneth and Darla Hosh, and it is located 0 .05 miles south of the city of Piasta along Sundown Road with a total of 32.49 acres surveyed. The property is zoned A1 Agricultural with your most recent approval of, of changing this. The purpose of the plat is to separate the home and the farm buildings to sell to the sun. The survey creates two lots. Lot one is a total of 3.26 acres surveyed with the home and the buildings, and it will be sold to the sun. Lot two is a total of 29.23 acres surveyed, and it will remain in current ownership and agricultural use. Lot one will use an existing residential access off of Sundown Road at Hayhaj Drive, and lot two will use a 20-foot access easement across lot one off Sundown Road in Hayhaj Drive. <coughs> there were no additions or corrections required for this plat. The mortgage's acknowledgement is signed and attached, and all the signatures are current. This plat has been reviewed by myself as plat's officer and has all the required signatures. I respectfully recommend approval. So this is just following up with what we're doing from your previous case. Okay. Any questions for Tammy or Angie? Very efficient. Well done. I'll motion. make a motion. Go ahead. I'll make a motion to approve the plat as presented. Second. Motion made and seconded to approve the plat. Any further discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Carried three to zero. All right. Item seven. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Item seven on the agenda, um, which is action items. Uh, the board may approve, deny, or table any action item. Item 7A, resolution, appointment of deputies, assistants, and clerks. And this is the revised one, is that correct? Okay, thank you. And Don, do you have any comments? I re reviewed all these and recommend approval with the addition of the secondary roads um, that was the paper copy in front of you. Okay. I'll make a motion to approve the resolution as uh, presented in, in its amended form. Second. Okay. Motion made and seconded to approve the resolution. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Carried. All right. Um, item 7B. And this is... Uh, Resolution um, regarding the Martin Luther King Jr. holiday. And uh, I'm going to read the resolution before I do that. Um, I want to um, say that I'm very pleased and proud to be sitting here today uh, re reading this resolution. Um, I think that uh, it's, uh, I think it should have been done. A long time ago, but um, I will. Some of the background on this is uh, I have religiously attended the Martin Luther King Jr. Uh, breakfast, and last year when I got here after the breakfast and saw the sign that said "State Office is closed, County Office is open," um, I, and I know that um, other uh, agencies. Uh, celebrate this birthday, um, uh, the birthday holiday of Dr. Martin Luther King, as they should, as a as a um, holiday to be celebrated, and so I ask that we start the discussion. I know we have um, collective bargaining to work in with this, but I just wanted to say how proud I am that we're taking this step forward. So I'll let the other. Supervisors comment if they like. Well, I, I wanted to know if it's um, the recommendation of our HR director that we do this. And um, then also to ask you if you've done any, um, I agree we're late to this as an idea, but today is the day. So, um, but, you know, looking at other counties, what do other counties do? What is the relationship between this holiday and the broader community at large, if you know? 
Um, I did ask some folks in your office on Friday um, to make some calls. Tanya did that for me. So just asking if the HR department would like to address this issue. Oh, absolutely. Thank you. Um, you know, I, I share um, Supervisor Baker's um, comment of I was disappointed when I came here to see that we were not designating this day. Um, it's very important, especially as, a, as an HR professional, um, you know, having inclusiveness within your county, within for whether it be employment or, you know, small businesses, minor, minority businesses, those should all be recognized um, in everything that we do in the programs that we present. Um, and so absolutely, I encourage um, the, the approval of this holiday. Um, it is, it's, yes, it's very common. Um, you know, the, the state um, designates it, the city designates it. Um, past employers that I've worked with, um, it's not uncommon. Um, just note that you have approved um, this holiday for two of our bargaining units that we bargain for. So um, they are, we, you, you have already shown your support for this day through those bargaining units and then this would also carry on to others, um, the, the non-bargaining and the other unions as well. So I, I'd ask you, Don, to help us as a county in light of your past experience to help us make this be not just as the folks have talked this morning, a check, that it's a done, but that it's the beginning Absolutely. of having greater discussion and moving forward on not just include, encouraging our staff to go to the Martin Luther King breakfast, that seems to be somewhat of a minimum, but also to be looking at how do we, brought, how do we address inclusivity, how do we look at um, encouraging minority voices on all of our committees and our subcommittees. Yep. And I think you're a, you have that background mm -hmm. to help us grow that. And I know we have committed partners here in the room who are anxious to have the conversation as well. So I appreciate your comments today. Thank you. Thank you. Jay? Very pleased we're celebrating it. And uh, just as uh, Supervisor McDonough said, a shout out to Anthony Allen, Caprice Jones, with your leadership in the community. We greatly appreciate that. All right, I'm going to read the uh, resolution. Um, whereas Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. changed our nation forever through his leadership, service, and vision for excellence and equality for all. And whereas Dubuque County recognizes and appreciates the significant legacy of freedom and equality left by Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. And whereas Dubuque County recognizes and honors the occasion of the birthday of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. and wishes to honor the lasting legacy of this great American, remembering the ideals for which he fought and recommitting ourselves to ensuring that our country's promise extends to all Americans across this great land. And now therefore be it resolved that the Dubuque County Board of Supervisors designates Martin Luther King Jr.'s birthday as an official county holiday and encourages all Americans to celebrate his memory by performing acts of kindness through service to others. This resolution is adopted this ninth day of December 2019, uh, Dubuque County Board of Supervisors. So I'd ask for a motion. I'll make a motion to approve the resolution. And I will second that. Okay, motion made and seconded to approve the resolution. Is there any discussion? All in favor signify... All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Okay, now I would ask if anyone uh, that's here would like to uh, uh, go to the podium and uh, uh, talk about our resolution, I would uh, welcome that at this point. If uh, uh, Ray or Caprice or Anthony or anyone else in the room want to <laughs> make a comment. I, I know my friend Ray is never at a loss for words, so... <laughs> this I, I, I deeply appreciate uh, the supervisors uh, making this uh, a, a, a an actual living, breathing animal. Right? People don't necessarily ever remember what you say; they remember what you do. Right? And when you do something like this, right, this uh, lets them know that you know that maybe. The, the focus is in the right direction, and we appreciate that. Right. That's coming from, uh, my name is Ray Owens, from uh, 2955 Hillcrest Road, right, uh, representing 40 people and the Butte County of Veterans Affairs. 
Thank you, Ray. I did it backwards, but it's <laughs> <laughs> you did fine. Well, I thank you guys for um, inviting us here today. And I'm just very grateful for the opportunity to bear witness to um, change. You know, it comes in, um, in different forms and it comes at different times. And I'm just humbled to be able to be alive and free to be a part of the change. Because Martin Luther King Jr., um, since a child, he's always been like a mentor to me. And he was a part of my change even while he's not even here because he would always be the one to reflect um, back on like my responsibility to be a part of the solutions instead of part of the problems that I was once a part of. Mm -hmm. And I think it's a testament to the growth that uh, Dubuque is taking these days by <clears throat> um, stepping out of fear, stepping out on courage hope and entering into the dream that every American is supposed to be able to experience. So I thank you, but also I want to say it's a testament to the work that Anthony Allen and Ray, because they've been here before me, and I'm just, I'm just a recipient of the process that they already begun, and I'm just here now to break it all the way through. So I thank you guys, and go debut. Priest. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> no, I just want to thank all of you. Uh, this is a brave step. Uh, my name is Anthony Allen. I'm representing the NAACP, uh, P.O. Box 1012, Dubuque, Iowa. Uh, one of the things we always work toward is making sure that we locate peaceful heroes. Uh, and our MLK tribute this year is, the theme is Peaceful Heroes. So you're becoming peaceful heroes by allowing us to go further. You know, earlier we talked about, yeah, it's going to be heat. It may be some heat, but that means we're cooking. <laughs> you know, I look at it that way. That means we're cooking, so we just got to make sure things get done and continue to get done. So I thank you and I applaud you. Thank you, Anthony. Thank you. Good to see you. Uh, if they would like, would you guys? We, can would we do you a, want a picture? Picture? Should we do a photo? We usually do that for all our. Let's get all the supervisors in. Come on up. Come on up. We'll get it right by the American flag. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I just you want to be careful of this. You split. can have a hat if I can wear a jeans, right? As long as, you don't, as long as you don't get a resolution on the dress code, Dave, I'll be happy. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right. Appreciate it. We good here? Yeah. We good. Yeah. Got it? All right. All right. Thank okay. you again. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for your service. Thank you. 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 Okay. Or Thank you. 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 Thank All right, next item is 7C, resolution approving the 2019 Weed Commissioner's Report. Can I ask some questions? Sure. So, um, uniform in our UCC, so the Urban County Coalition, there was some discussion about um, this weed report and what the expectation is and is the state asking us to report the right things. I think it goes somewhat to um, the discussion of with the changes in our environment. You know, is anybody looking at this? I obviously know that, you know, Nate's very capable, right? But is I just don't know if there's any discussion we want to have. I'm not suggesting a work session. I just, to be aware, 
that this report was showing things that are showing up that have never been seen before. Um, I thought that there were some noteworthy um, things in the weed report, which is not a sentence I ever thought I would say in my life, but there it is. So I don't know if you either looked at that and, and just noted, you know, that too, that it's um, found a problem in my county. I mean, we have some, we have some issues here that we might want to, you know, be just drawing some public attention to, and then also, you know, the amount of and the chemicals that we're using um, to, you know, under the weed, um, you know, the, this isn't done just by anybody, but the weed commissioner's report certainly shows problems and, you know, that we're attempting to resolve. So I don't know, Jay, if that's discussed in at the conservation board, um, you know, or if this, um, just he, is at this by himself? Is there some other support we should give? Yeah, I think, you know, in the, the report, it, it's good education and information, and there's small recommendations as far as just increased funding for, for mowing before some of these noxious uh, weeds go to, to bloom. And uh, then it's also good probably just to understand better what our policies are related to the, the right-of-way and the parks related to pesticides. Um, it seems like the issues are getting bigger. So there's more and more that they at conservation meetings talk about as far as just uh, issues that they have to to take care of on our conservation property. And then I don't know, Anthony, is this is, is this report include the right of way components as well? Okay. Um, so we haven't had a lot of discussion on it, but uh, you know certainly the, the couple of recommendations I'll be I'll be looking at and talking about at the conservation board related to uh, you know trying to increase the funding for. For additional mowing and trying to prevent some of these from spreading mm -hmm. I, I would say I um, you know from time to time and sometimes it's tied in with budget we've had Brian uh, Preston come in uh, maybe it's time for an update or maybe as part of his um, budget presentation we could ask him to address this uh, but uh, uh, so I agree and and Anthony you would your department would have uh, input into this as well. Is that not yeah, correct? He wants to, um, you know, help further educate them to, you know, recognize these species and what chemicals to use, what pesticides. So that's I, kind of an active. I'm viewing this more as an edu education of, of the supervisors. And I think then because it's in a public meeting that gets passed on to the, to the citizens. Uh, so um, maybe if, you don't mind, we can uh, get with Brian and sure. see about maybe either working it in with one of your um, regular, uh, uh, you know, road um, work sessions uh, in the future. Yep. I don't think. If, if you go you to know. page two, can you scroll up one page? Because those are the ones, the answer number one is that they are found and they are a problem in our county and they don't fit on the, you know, these are things that it, it seems to me as I look at this, you know, invasive prohibited plants, they're here, they're a problem. I don't know, I mean, they, they must be filled in by Nate, maybe that it's unique to us, not necessarily on the standard form. So it kind of goes to, you know, maybe, you know, he's a quiet man. Maybe this is him telling us, hey, look at this, you've got, you know, five of these things that are problems and I'm identifying them. And so just if there's more discussion to be had about this, it's, I just didn't want to receive and file. I wanted to make sure that we at least paused to make sure we read the read this and had understanding. I, I think that the spraying of some of those chemicals is, you know, you're in a bad spot. The chemicals themselves can cause harm, um, but what else are, are what are our other solutions? Because we have to keep up on this because by their very nature, they're, you know, noxious weeds, so. One of those things we have to carefully balance, too, because, you know, mm -hmm. there are some sensitive areas that people do not want to spring around. Um, we've had some public complaints with some of our spring. You know, windy mm -hmm. days, we can't spray because of the crops. Mm -hmm. So it's it's definitely a sensitive balance that. Yeah. And I know the uh, Sisters of uh, the Order of St. Francis have uh, used the uh, goats on the go, uh, and maybe things like that uh, we could look at. I mean, I know people get a chuckle my wife and my grandkids love to see the goats out there chomping away but they're really there for a purpose and uh, uh, it's environmentally uh, friendly but I, I'm saying that that might be 
um, you know, that might be an alternative. I don't disagree with the strategic use of goats. Yeah. And I'm saying that with humor in my voice because yeah. it's, again, another se another sentence I didn't think I would say in a public meeting ever in my life, but there it is. So, um, well, but as the, as we, no, but as yeah. this, as our county changes due to the weather changes, um, it's our responsibility, and I think all three of us share that, that we, we're being asked to lead on that and ask the questions about what's changing and what's different. So um, if there's something that's noteworthy, I would appreciate you getting back to us from a roads department, and then also, Jay, I'd appreciate the you know, Conservation Board's remarks if they have any. And I know this is my third weed commissioner report, and I couldn't help as I was reading it last week uh, when I was on the road, uh, that uh, when weed commissioner popped up, I'm thinking that uh, in January, <laughs> the first meeting of the Joe Davies County weed commissioner might take on a new meeting. It might be a different type of commission. <laughs> Tongue in cheek, <laughs> of course. <laughs> All right. Uh, so I'll make a motion to approve the weed commissioner's report. And I will second that. All right. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Carried three to zero. Thank you. All right, uh, item D, seven D, resolution approving the release of mortgage in Loiza County for JumpStart Federal Housing Rehabilitation Payment Program. Motion to approve. And I will second that. Okay. Motion made and seconded to approve the resolution. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Carried three to zero. Um, my understanding, uh, next resolution is 7E and then also 7F. Uh, our uh, HR Director, Don Sherman, has recommended that we table this because we have a work session on this later today. So I entertain a motion. Can we do those at once, Mary? No, separate. So item 7E is a resolution approving the contract with Cypress Solutions for a roads GPS pilot program. Um, and the recommendation is to uh, table this till our meeting today. So okay. moved. And I will second that. Okay. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 So 7F, resolution approving the West Campus Project Change Order 004-BP2. Uh, that's uh, also recommended for tabling because we have a meeting in regard to that today. I'll make a motion to table. Second. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Carried. Okay, now we're going to 7G. 7G is approving, uh, resolution approving the use of vehicle administrative policy. And I guess I would uh, go to um, our HR director, Don Sherman, for her input on this. Thank you. Um, so I worked with our budget director and member and staff from our auditor's office to update our vehicle policy. Um, we really wanted to look at, um, we wanted to modernize some of the language in there, but we also wanted to ensure that we were identifying taxability of, of some of our take home um, vehicles. We know there are not many um, that will actually be, will fit under that taxability. Um, but that is something that we wanted to address. And we also wanted to provide some guidance of determining um, who is eligible for a take-home um, vehicle. So we added some verbiage in there as well um, to help department heads and elected officials um, give them some guidance when they're considering um, allowing a vehicle to be taken home by an employee. Okay. One of the requests I had is the the count of uh, echo vehicles that we had. And I think uh, I received that from, I don't know who sent it, but I, <laughs> whether it was Dawn, Stella, thank you. And uh, one was for the sheriff's cars and then the other ones for were non-sheriff departments. You want, uh, okay. I was, and, and most likely I think we've, we've had, you know, discussions on sheriff vehicles going home I don't know if we have any plain marked cars that are used in the sheriff's department for deputy or for detectives or other things, but um, I was really more interested probably in the operations vehicles and how many we have. The, the spreadsheet's quite long. Did we have a count? Is there 20? Is there 50? <laughs> well, just county vehicles that we had that would be covered under this policy. 
that's kind of what I was getting at. Um, just to understand what, what's the, the depth of this policy. Um, but what you're saying is the long, the copy of the 2020 vehicle schedule, that includes the sheriff cars as well? So I'd have to break those out. Yeah, I'd be interested in that actually, knowing that number too, and probably the public at large would. Um, would it be something that we could perhaps table and come back to, to look at that? Possibly, and then it would also you know, break out probably the, the equipment components. So any large trucks that would be considered, uh, I assume large trucks are not take home, Anthony. So anything that would be normally used in, in non-construction operations and probably non-sheriff policing operations. Just to get an understanding of what that number is. And then I had a question, is this, I, I'm not really seeing it, but um, uh, we've had discussions or issues about carpooling uh, in most, I think in most cases, um, it's, you know, if it's a county vehicle, obviously, uh, uh, it's not, it's, uh, not an issue, but, uh, you know, we do occasionally have, uh, training, uh, conferences where multiple employees drive, um, and I, I, I didn't see anything specific, uh, in here, uh, if we're sending, um, X amount of people, let's, I'll just use a round number four um, to a conference. I don't think we need to have four vehicles going that we're paying people mileage for. Um, now in the past, uh, there have been some, you know, variations, some discussion on that. Uh, but uh, uh, I think, uh, I don't see that in here. Have, was that discussed or is that in a different policy? It's not in a policy. That would be more procedural to be when you approve the travel authorizations. Um, you would have the opportunity there to deny if somebody wanted to use a vehicle. We did not, it was not in the previous policy and we did not uh, add that to here, but we could, but it would be more through the... Well, um, the problem with that is if with, you know, if it's an uh, elected official, uh, department um, and they don't you know they don't want to uh, uh, you know suggest that or enforce that um, then we there's not much we can do about it I think if it's in our uh, policies um, I think there should be um, some reference to carpool <coughs> I, 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 so if we're going to table this I would like that to be looked at and uh, uh, it, it just doesn't makes sense to pay mileage to multiple employees going to the same location. Mm -hmm. So the scope of the policy, um, all employees who report through are responsible to you are covered by this. For employees that are, um, that have an elected official or uh, like conservation board that have a, a board that they report to, they each individually would have to adopt this policy or choose to follow it. So if they're under elected official, it ultimately, regardless of what our policy says, if the elected official does not adopt that as their department policy, we would not be able to enforce it. Well, and I get, I get that. Um, but we, we need to have a policy. And then I would like to, uh, if, if there are departments that don't want to follow this, I would want to have a discussion with them on why the county policy isn't uh, uh, that they don't want to follow. What, 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 what's different from, um, you know, uh, because there's an, ele an elected official um, I, I, that's the, in charge of that department versus an appointed official. I, I think the same rules should apply. I think we should have uniform rules, policies, and procedures, which, so maybe we need to even go back um, and ask our uh, uh, elected officials to s sign off, I don't know if that's the right term, but, or adopt this or acknowledge this uh, uh, policy and have some teeth in there for, um, you know, for uh, uh, things such as carpooling. Uh, it's, you know, it's, it's, in, it's protecting the taxpayers um, is, is what it's doing. So I, I think if this was a, uh, you know, if we were a business and we had four people going to the same location, I think they would be expected to ride together. 
Uh, so why should government be any different? And I would want to have that discussion with any elected official that, that wants to have that discussion. It, I think it's noteworthy here that Anthony, your crew just received an award in Des Moines and all four of you went down in one vehicle. Right. So I thought that was just a well-timed example of the carpooling right there. So it's also a way to compliment you without you being on the agenda. So well done. I think I, uh, I would be in generally a favor of having one policy. I think that would be the, the goal. Um, past that, the only other item I had kind of, you know, some some items would be number six. I think it's, I don't know if it's, if you go to six, keep scrolling further in the document, related to uh, uh, electronic communication. I think we'd just be clearer in that. It's kind of, you know, just electronic communication is pretty, pretty vague. I think specifically calling out using handheld devices while operating or just more clear languages. Uh, Because the, the concept of electronic communication and then cell phone, like voice calls, just making that clear. And then we want to go down that road. Um, <laughs> it's on my mind, so I'll say it. So the, the other piece related to using your personal vehicles, this, the policy also states that uh, this county policy covers that. So that would prohibit us from talking on the phone for lengths of time in our personal vehicles. So all employees using a personal vehicles on a regular basis, which would be the supervisors, must provide proof of insurance. That's no problem. What was the other one? Oh, the policy part. Using their personal vehicles for the purpose of conducting county-related business. And it goes back to the previous ones where you're not supposed to be on calls of a longer length. And unfortunately, that, that occurs. It's hard to tell citizens to stop talking. <laughs> Hang up on them. So those would be the ones we'd probably just talk about. But uh, otherwise, the rest of the policy I thought was, was logical and made sense. And I would support it. Do the other supervisors share my concern about carpooling? I mean, I think, it's, I think when it makes sense, you, you, you do it. Um, you know, and clearly, if you're going to an event and uh, uh, you have the ability of the vehicle to accommodate the people, you, you do it. Um, not everyone's schedules line up for that always, so it's probably not an always thing, but you know, certainly the intent would be to carpool and to, to, to share that resource. I think you could say that it's the recommendation that carpooling be, um, be discussed where appropriate. I know that um, something that's come up before is you know, the required carpooling of attorneys to go to the same, you know, the county attorneys to go to the same Okaboji conference um, I honestly, I don't think we're ever going to get that to happen. Um, everyone leaves for that event as their schedule allows and returns as their schedule allows and as their, you know, I, I think it's some, it's important that we all think about it, but, and I think that could be in a policy, but I don't know how every department is best known by its director as to how it relates. So. But I, I think, Don, the meeting that you had, there were, I as I commented at the end of the meeting to you privately, there weren't very many people in attendance. I would have expected to see a robust um, showing of directors and um, maybe elected officials when you were discussing this policy and the following one as well with them as it relates. I think there were maybe four. I had requested um, feedback as well, so I had some emails just saying that they were okay with it if they were not able to attend as well. But um, it was sent out twice to all the elected officials and department heads for comment and review. But if they haven't given you feedback and they didn't come, then I'm not sure they're even going to have a discussion about carpooling unless we make that front and center. If, if you choose to table us, we can, um, we can um, take your suggestions and apply it to the policy and bring that back in January, and then also have a breakdown of the different vehicles. Um, we can have that ready for you in January then, too. That would be great. I'll make a motion to, to table this resolution. Second. Okay, motion made and seconded to table the resolution. Is there any further discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Tabled. All right, next is uh, 7-H. Uh, this is 
approving a resolution approving the cell phone administrative policy. And this one as well, I was be interested in knowing how many how many phones we had out there, and I didn't want to send you another email and have you scramble if it wouldn't have much value because I know that's probably a big task. But just to organize how many plans we have, how many people are covered, and then possibly what we anticipate if your two buckets are, are still the same, county provided phone and then stipend, what we'd anticipate or propose to make those changes. We'll use that as part of the budget process too. This, do, I mean, just, I, I read the policy and I know that it, it states that if somebody just occasionally receives a call on their um, personal cell phone, it doesn't qualify them for as county use. Um, but uh, I would also like to know how, how many people, I mean, I see the claims that come through for cell phone uh, reimbursement, um, and also the claims, which are uh, uh, several for our uh, monthly cell phone plans. And we have different carriers, um, probably different plans. I don't know how often those are reviewed. Um, and um, I guess I would, was, was all that discussed during this, during these meetings? It, it was. Um, right now, the, the process or the practices, each department had an elected official determines their own. They, they go out and contract with the provider um, for their department. So yes, we, you'll write out a, a check to several different providers each month. Um, it's a very decentralized process. Uh, again, that's kind of why we looked at the policy is to give some guidance um, to determine who gets a um, like a stipend. Um, we want to ensure that it's not being um, abused, which I don't think that it is, but we want to give them some guidance of you know, that, that it has to be that they're outside of their office frequently, you know, um, they're not able to be in their, you know, they travel um, frequently. So, um, yeah, it's a very decentralized process. We don't have a central department that manages um, cell, county issued cell phones. Well, one of, the, one of the issues I have, I believe that we are providing cell phones for state employees, for DHS. That is correct. We are reimbursed. But even with that, we're reimbursed. Okay, it's still tax dollars. Does somebody, uh, does somebody occasionally review those uh, to make sure we're getting the best bang for the buck. I am not into um, government, I, you know, okay, we get reimbursed, I, and I get that, and, I, and that makes me feel better that we get reimbursed. But I still pay, like everybody else, state taxes. So I don't believe we should be wasting any tax dollars. Um, so how do we uh, control this? Does the state have uh, a cell phone police person that uh, reviews this, um, you know, I'm not, if, if they're a county department and especially elected officials, I think it would be in their best interest to uh, get the best deal for the taxpayers, but I don't necessarily feel the same way about, um, you know, uh, about agencies that we don't have control over. I'm not being critical. So how, how do we do that? Can we, do we have the ability to ask them to review it? Um, so I, that's a concern I have um, because I don't have control over that. The only thing we get to do is approve the payment and, and write the check. So, um, well, and that brings my question. I didn't see in the document the stipend amount that was proposed. We would have it that Board of Supervisors would approve that through the budget process. Okay. I would be interested in having that proposed in this document. Okay. I mean, I'm happy to make that decision, but I don't want to have to go through all the details and thought process that, uh, you know, comes up with that. So if you get feedback from the departments and elected officials on what is a valid stipend for those use, and it could vary amongst departments. Yeah, we, there, some of the 
things that we considered when we were looking at them is that we have seen policies that have a tiered system depending on the percentage of time you use on it. Um, so we did not have to update the policy annually. That's why we put it, we thought it would be best placed in the budget process um, so that you can change it annually without us having to update the policy every year. But we can give a recommendation. We have, there are two different levels of payments now and so we can um, provide that to you and provide a recommendation. That, that was going to be my next question. I know that, I know that some are reimbursed forty dollars a month. That seems to be a fairly common, but I also think there's is there a thirty five? There's a thirty and a forty, 30 uh, and, a 40. and there's also some I know that we're looking at just reimbursing them. Um, for example, in the elections um, department, that that would only be a stipend for a few months because during the election time when it gets closer staff is out of the office frequently and needs accessibility so um, so even the stipends may not be an ongoing you know 12 month stipend it may just be a few months out of the year depending on the individual need okay but some are month after month every month uh, and uh, i mean if somebody if if a department head were wanting to change that either increase or decrease what would the process be i don't i don't know would right they... now the, the elected official department head just contacts the auditor's office under this policy you would be determining what that stipend is so the auditor would or would it come back to us or well, well the policy has it that the board of supervisors would be okay. determining the so stipend. can we get a list of uh, cell phones that we're paying for I think that's reasonable and can we get a list from the state and and here's uh, again I'm, I'm going back to this but I'm picturing a basket full of cell phones not being used because there's unfilled positions and uh, you know now that might be paranoid on my part but uh, that's what I'm picturing uh, we've got numerous people that work at DHS so if the state doesn't fill a position, do we cancel that cell phone for that period of time so we're not paying for it? I think it's reasonable. Now, the, the basket of cell phones is probably an exaggeration. But, uh, you know, there's been worse things uh, that have happened in government. And uh, uh, so I'm, I'm concerned. Um, I want to make sure that we're getting the best bang for the buck. And I view um, state taxes and, and municipal taxes and school taxes and county taxes. Uh, it's all, you know, it's all comes out of the taxpayers' pockets and uh, they, we should be good stewards at all levels. All right, thank you. My, my last recommendation too would be to include uh, components related to the signature lines, web and business cards of those phones. So if you are receiving a stipend or you are receiving a county phone, try to match that up to the communication out to the public. Because uh, I think generally, you know, the, the way it's going, mobile use and cell phone use is probably the best way to reach citizens. And so I, I am encouraged, I'm glad we're having a policy, and I'd like that policy to support that type of communication so that we can, as a government can be accessible when we need to be. And sometimes related to roads and EMS and various other areas, that might be 24-7. And for others, it might be more eight to five, so to speak. I'm not sure what you're asking, Jay. Are those cell phones supposed to be published then? Should yeah. Anthony's cell phone well, be available to the public? If we're, I mean, so in, in general, I would think that if we're paying for a stipend and a cell phone, those would be part of the published list. I don't want to call out any one employee now just because of their, their, their you know, processes, but I think that would be what you'd want is that this, yeah, open records and the citizens can access them and, and, and make that communication. Um, all of our cell phones are published. Uh, city of Dubuque's city council, it's not. None of the city council members are published at all. And uh, I'm very proud that our supervisors publish our personal cell phones, which we probably should mention, how does this policy cover uh, the board of supervisors? And what have you found related to uh, supervisors throughout the state because this is you know I would actually have to look because it says it's for the employees who report to the Board of Supervisors does it apply to the Board of Supervisors I don't believe it would <laughs> yeah okay so and I'm, I'm, I'm 
I'm fine with that. I wasn't calling that out, but just that was my question. It would be important to have, if we're going to look at the cell phones that we assign to, again, I don't know if we do that for county attorneys, but that we state to those folks, you're, you'll need to have more people come, John, to these meetings to say, because if we're going to publish, and I don't disagree that we do, but that's something you'll want to talk of through in your department, that here's your cell phone, and it's going to be on your business card, and it's going to be on the new website, and you know um, that could be uh, um, uh, th that could be a factor of whether or not somebody wants a, a county issued cell phone, whether or not they want those calls. It certainly, would be a game changer for any county attorney. So just to have that be noted, I think. Yeah. Once we revise it, we'll kind of get our team back together, um, our small group, um, take right. into consideration your comments. Right. And we'll reapproach right. the elected officials and departments. I just want to make sure, CJ, I'm clear. I don't mean the county attorney. I'm talking about assistant county attorneys. They, they do not. Get you on the mic. For example, what we have is we have an on-call phone because somebody's on call, you know, mm -hmm. from Friday to Friday. For law and, enforcement primarily. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and the courts. Right, the courts and the jail and all of that. Um, there was another phone which uh, was the felony lawyers would carry it so that someone of the person that the on call person had a like a bigger question, so to speak. But they we, we've agreed and decided that, that the numbers are in there and they can just call them their personal phone. And then Mr. Potter had a phone, which I'm not quite so sure what all he did with it. Um, and I've had some brief discussion with Denise about that. I don't carry it really myself. I've left it in the office if the others need it for something. But uh, so, but yeah, I think as we move forward, it's probably something to talk about. I know I, I, I think it makes great sense to tidy this up because, like for instance, you know, there's kind of these phones laying around, and I think the one that was the felony phone, a couple buttons didn't work, which I kind of begged the question: if the phone literally is not physically working, it's we probably need to do something about that, but that's for another day, I guess. So, but, mm -hmm. but yeah, it, it, Supervisor McDonough, I think, uh, you know, it, it does kind of beg some questions, but I think it's on the right path, though. I mean, I looked at it and I put my, my message to Bamford Brown because I think I was at the follow up conference when this, when the meeting was, was made on. I think, yeah, very good. So I'm assuming that the cell phone information is all available in the various budgets. Uh, is it? Can we pull that together into a report for a future meeting? Okay. Is it okay? So there wouldn't be like a line item in a budget for cell phone. Okay, but it wouldn't necessarily identify cell phones. It could be office phones as well. Okay. Okay. So, so Don, thank you for taking the leadership on the vehicle and the cell phone. Um, and uh, it's been good discussion. I'll make a motion to table the cell phone policy resolution. Second. Okay. Motion made and seconded to table. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Carried 3 0. All right. Next up is uh, a resolution, item 7i. Approving necessary right-of-way documents for HMA resurfacing with milling and pipe culverts project on Monastery Road, project FM-C031107-2022. I'll make a motion to approve the resolution. Second. Okay, motion made and seconded to approve the resolution. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Carried 3-0. Resolution item 7J. Approve the plans and specifications for HMA resurfacing with milling and pipe culverts project on Monastery Road, Project FM, C031107-55-31. Motion to approve. And I will second that. Okay, motion made and seconded to approve the resolution. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Carried, 3-0. Uh, item 7, 7K, resolution to approve plans and specifications for HMA resurfacing, full depth reclamation, and pipe culverts project on 
Wapaton Road, Project FM dash C031108 dash 55 dash 31. Making a motion to approve the resolution. Second. Second. Okay, and seconded it. Uh, in discussion, Anthony, this, uh, this is a full, um, uh, your uh, re, uh, what, relaying the road bed, uh, uh, and this, I think you told me, is probably one of the worst roads in Dubuque County. Yeah, condition-wise, I would say it's, it's right there, maybe number one, number two of the entire county. Okay. Um, this would be similar to like the cold in place process, but we're going deeper. We go 12 inches deep with a uh, cement additive that we add into it, and so it, it creates a, a firm base for the HMA surfacing that we put on top of it. Okay. All right. The motion was made and seconded to approve the resolution. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Carried three to zero. Uh, item 7L, resolution to approve plans and specifications for the HMA resurfacing pipe culverts and RCB new single box culvert project on Dyersville East Road, project FM-C031109-55-31. Uh, ask Anthony if you have anything you can add to this just generally this I think this is out there connected to the area where the Major League Baseball expansion is happening and we had this plan previously this doesn't relate to that yeah so we've had this plan for four or five years now it just coincidentally is lining up with um, Major League Baseball this year mm -hmm. um, but it's, it's actually good timing okay Make a motion to approve. And I will second that. Motion made and seconded to approve the resolution. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Carried 3-0. Move to item 8 uh, on the agenda communications. Uh, this is correspondence the board will receive and file without taking action. Damage claim, CenturyLink cable, uh, receive and refer to Budget Director Stella Rundy is the recommendation. Make a motion to receive and file and send to Stella Rundy. Okay. And I will second that. Motion made and seconded to uh, refer to receive and refer to Budget Director Rundy. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Carried three to zero. Uh, item nine is uh, appointments. Um, under 9A, one, uh, number one, medical examiners and deputy, three vacancies for a two-year term ending December 31, 2021. We have any input on this? This is the two McKeon, Dr. McKeon's and Alex Jones. Motion to approve. And I will second that. Okay. Motion made and seconded to approve the appointment. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Carried 3 0. Um, 9A2, uh, Dubuque County Board of Health. And this is uh, Tom Beshin um, has applied. He currently is the chair of that committee and uh, is reapplying. Is the current chair motion to approve? I guess his term is up, is, is what the, uh, the deal is. So there is a motion to approve. I'm looking for more discussion, so I, at this point, won't be seconding it. Not that I don't want to I'll, combat I'll second it for the purpose of moving it forward in discussion, so uh, I'll open it for discussion. Well, this was a board. They had requested some number changes on the board, and that's what I wanted some clarification on. If uh, I think we had approved that, and what was the number, and I don't know if you or others know. I do know. So... Um, they had sent an email to you um, letting you know their intention to discuss that at their December meeting. So they have a board meeting on December 11th in which they were going to make a recommendation to bring to you to reduce that number from eight to seven. So right now it is approved for eight members and this appointment would be that eighth member. Okay. Well, we, we, we recently so did an odd. appointment. <laughs> we recently add. did an appointment. Okay. Matthew Sanford. And they, um, so to me then it doesn't, I mean, I think Mr. Beshin does a great job. He's on two of our boards. So are they saying they, they want us to hold off on this in case they go to seven? They have not indicated that to me. They, they have not had a meeting since they sent that email as well. Um, 
it was my understanding it was going to be on okay. the agenda for Wednesday. So we have seven on the board right now, and they're contemplating going from eight to seven with an open spot. Um, they would contemplate recommending that to you because you ultimately determine the the composition of that board. But it's not I'm going to say within the last two years, they wanted to expand the board, which we did. And now they're, they're saying to go from eight to seven. I know we had this discussion a little bit when we appointed Mr. Sanford. So now I'm a little confused. And so was I. And so that's why, you know, so I'm good to hear they have a meeting coming up this week. Um, you said they'll, that's wrong month. Um, so I'd be looking to table this and hear their discussion and let them have their discussion on their board counts and let us know what their interest and intent would be. That would be what I would like before we appoint additional people. We currently have seven on that board. Is that correct? Yes, and then you have a, the eighth and one. This is, a is the eighth. That this would be okay. So we currently have eight, including Mr. Bash in the chair, correct. and he is applying to continue on that board. But, right. but they wanted to go to seven, which would, you know, create somebody's got to go off the board. I, it, <laughs> so it almost would, seems to be, be like they're looking at who the people are to determine the number. And I'm not in favor of that. Um, the so. only thing I know I'd like to bring to your attention is that when I, I did meet with um, Tom Beshin, I don't know, last week, just to talk about some budget issues, looking ahead to some of the subcommittee work that the Board of Health does. Um, and he and I talked about those things. He wanted me to be aware um, that when you look at the positions on the Board of Health, I think it's four positions all end at the same time. So there's going to be significant turnover um, if those folks don't don't ask to reapply. And he was just making that a note that, you know, continuity, he, we were not discussing, I didn't know that his term was up necessarily, um, but that there's going to be a real need for some continuity on that board uh, because the board is changing and we're asking that board to do more things. It's asking it of itself. They've had taken on Food Policy Council, Opioid Subcommittee, Vaccination Subcommittee, all doing great work. Um, you know, we're working with a new employee who's doing some soil and water as he gets trained up. So um, there's lots of things inside that department that are changing. Uh, so the fact that the board chair is asking that he be reappointed to the board position, I would be in favor of that. He obviously knows about um, whether they're going to recommend to go or change their number, but I would support his application. I, I also support his application, but if, I guess I'm getting mixed messages from them. So if, if they've asked us to hold off um, until they can meet and discuss it. Which we didn't. I, I'm likely to. We didn't do that. We didn't hold off adding. But then it falls to who the appointees are. And I think that's not a game that uh, I think they should be playing. They asked us to increase the board, Anne, prior to you coming on the board. Uh, and, uh, you know, we assumed that that's what they wanted. I don't think there's any gamesmanship there. I think it's just volunteers, uh, county okay. citizens doing the best they can, and they're doing some great things. You know, I some agree. of those committees are knocking it out of the ballpark. Yep. The vaccination subcommittee is writing to the governor and just letting us know that they're writing. I think they it's do pretty, great work. Pretty amazing. And, and I think we took the position when we went from seven to eight that they've asked for more. And we, I think my, my position was the more the merrier. So I, that's why I'm surprised at the request to, um, you know, go back to seven. So to me, I'm getting I, I'm getting a mixed message here. So well, precisely, uh, we have a motion and a second. Yeah, I'm going to withdraw my second, um, and then so we can table this and have discussion um, and let them sort out what they want to do. So it was my motion to approve, and it's going to fail without a second. Right. Okay. And I think the idea is to table. So yeah, that that would be my motion. Uh, having. Knowledge. I had questions on this and having knowledge of having their meeting this week. Let's have them have their meeting and have them discuss with the board and what their intent is for their board vision. So I'll make a motion to table this application. I'll second it. Is there any further discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 
Opposed? Nay. Carried two to one to table. So that as a table item will automatically come back, right, with this application. Okay. All right. Um, next item, 9A3, EMS Advisory Committee, one vacancy for a four-year term ending December 31, 2023. Make a motion to approve. I will second that. Okay, motion made and seconded to approve. The applicant's name is Sandy Nyan. Can I um, ask a question? Does she serve on the Tom Hancock Grant Committee? Um, Sounded familiar. I can. Is that how we struggle to find that um, extra woman, you know, to fill that? We did, but it's just a question. It doesn't need to hold anything up. I thought Dave maybe. Do you want me to? Know. Look, look it up. I may be able to find that here. You can still get that file in here. These are my active files that bounce around in the back of my truck. Back seat, I should say. That answer, Supervisor? Yeah. I don't. No, okay. okay. All right. You would have All a right. question. So, okay. All right. Um, motion was made and seconded to approve the uh, application of uh, Sandy Nyan. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Carried. All right. Uh, 9A4, Dubuque County Conservation Board. One vacancy for a five year term ending on December 31, 2024. Um, it says man or woman. I had a conversation with um, Stacy. I'm excited to see your application. Make a motion to approve. Should be a good addition. So you have two for consideration for one vacancy. So you have Stacy and then Mark Wagner. Sorry. Okay. No, so let's. And let's, I'm going to hold on that. I would like to have some discussion on both before. Uh, a motion to move. I would like to make a decision on one of the two candidates. So just to let you know, I'm, I'm not opposing the, the nomination. Just would like to have discussion maybe first before we we move forward with that. Okay. I we have I missed that. Two. So uh, we have uh, um, Mark David Wagner and Stacy Conforti. Yeah, from what I read, Both I don't, I don't know Stacy very well, but I do know Mark, and it looks like you know two really qualified candidates that are have experience in this space. Uh, Mark has many years of experience and actively works and/or volunteers with Mississippi River Museum, and was on the board for a year, um, fulfilling that role. And he's been involved in county conservation for quite a while. And then it appeared that stacy related to her expertise is managing parks and properties through the girl scouts right now and uh, um, would have similar experience that would be wonderful value to the to the board so we have we have two real good candidates and it makes it makes it difficult to decide one many times when we have these volunteer positions on boards we we you know are searching out for those volunteers to citizens to serve on these boards so i'm, I'm very pleased that we have have two, but uh, the board needs to, to make that decision. This is one of those boards that is identified in state code as five, and so we can't expand it like we did on the Board of Health because we had additional people that wanted to, to serve, so we do have to limit it to, to five. What is the current gender balance? Uh, Cindy Gatto uh, is, uh, and Mary Radoff are two women, and then there are three men currently serving, and Jeff Q is resigning and is this leaving is his, his position. position. So it'll be two and two, so this can be, that's why this is man or woman. Okay. I like very much, um, I know Mark as well, but I like Stacy's application, working with the Girl Scouts and that connection with, with girls outdooring and girls and the conservation effort. I think it's a an amazing opportunity to have a new perspective, which I think is one of the things that our boards and commissions don't necessarily have is new face, new experience, new generation. And, and I generally concur with, with all of what you've said. Um, and so if uh, whenever there's, I'm, 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 
I'm happy moving forward with Stacy's application when we have uh, completed our discussion. Yeah, I think it, we're blessed to have two qualified uh, citizens applying uh, for this. Uh, there is a is is it there a requirement that they're county residents and that do they both satisfy that? Okay. Stacy lives in the city of Dubuque. Okay. I assume it would be okay. I just saw a reference in, in Mr. Wagner's, a reference to Jasper County. Was that a previous? I think he worked for Jasper experience. County as well, County Conservation. Okay, it says, it specifically says in his application that he lives in Dubuque County. It's um, a Bellevue address, but. Jay, as a member of the Conservation Board, do you want to explore expansion of the number? Well, I don't think we can. We did look at that. Um, when we were looking at some of the health boards, I was kind of just wondering, and the state code does call out five. So if they change the, uh, the law, we could, but right now it has to be five. Right. And they have to be five and serve five five-year terms. Now, obviously, the board of supervisors can, can appoint and assign right. uh, those, those members uh, outside okay. of that. Would you have any interest in relinquishing your position as a supervisor on that board to let two other qualified candidates take the position? It's just something to think about as well. Um, I would be in favor of expanding the board if the state legislator, legislature would be interested in it. Yeah, I think uh, going from five to seven would be more inclusive of, of having more people involved. Conservation and parks and outdoor stuff seems to be pretty popular during our strategic planning. We would have you know, 30, 50 people, if not more, attend. We've had over 500 surveys that uh, citizens uh, put forward. So I think that shows you there's a lot of interest. So, so absolutely. Uh, but that's, uh, that's a, we're a long way from Rome, as they say. I wonder if, uh, if that's something, if we could modify our uh, uh, priorities and uh, get a feel from the ISAC and the UCC um, about this. I think it seems that, that there's interest in that. And, uh, you know, if the code says five, I guess I would want to know why and uh, uh, can we, you know, it would seem to be if I was a state legislator, um, I wouldn't, why would they really care if it's five or seven or nine? Uh, the, the good news is, you know, we do have a friends group and there's a lot of opportunities to volunteer. Um, now, you're not actually on the board approving, you know, exciting purchases like they're, you know, new skid steer, bobcat skid steer that's going to purchase and <laughs> cell phone policies and other stuff like that. Um, but you do get to uh, identify park use. But the friends group is tremendous as well, and that's an excellent opportunity for, for people that, that want to be involved in conservation that either don't want to sit on the board or, you know, unfortunately have not been able to get their application through. But at this point, with two qualified candidates, I would be looking to, to take action. So if we're completed with some discussion, I would make a motion to... Uh, well, I'm going to have go ahead. to... I think Ann already had made a motion. So we'll go back oh, okay. to her. So we'll her motion stands? All right. I'm going to... Ann, do you want to restate your motion? I, I Now that you have the awareness My of motion two... motion is to approve the application of Stacy Kentucky okay. to All right. the Dubuque County Board of Conservation. And I will second that. Okay. There's a motion made and seconded to approve the application of Stacy Conforti. Um, any further discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Carried three to zero. Okay. Next we have the Historical Preservation Commission, one vacancy for a three-year term ending December 31, 2022. And we have the application of Jason Nysus. Make a motion to approve. Yeah, I believe he was the only one. I will second that motion. Okay, motion made and second to approve the application. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Aye, carried 3-0. 9B, open vacancies on boards and commissions, information only. Okay, we'll go to next agenda item would be item 10, personnel requisitions. We have uh, two positions for roads. So I guess we go to Don Sherman, our HR director, and Anthony Barget, 
our county engineer for any input here. So this, the two positions, uh, the first one relates back to um, all the way back when Rick Herbst, maintainer operator, retired. And then we had a, a mechanic bid out of the shop into this position. And then we hired a mechanic. That, that, that former mechanic was now retired, bid back to the shop. And so um, we had this kind of merry-go-round happen. Um, but we ultimately had a, um, um, a vacancy during that time in the M1 position. But we were um, equal to the, the employees we, um, that we had before because of the extra mechanic. Um, that, you know, Vic Dotto um, retired, and so that brought that, that um, you know, number of employees down one again. The second position is with, uh, with Jim Larkin retiring, and we've gone through the bid process. Uh, people have, have shifted where they need to, need to be with the bid process, and now we're back to uh, an opening in the M1. So we have two different M1s that have taken about a year, year and a half to kind of shake out to get to this point. I'll make a motion to approve the personnel requisition. Second. All, okay, motion made and seconded uh, to approve the personnel requisitions. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Aye, aye. carried three to zero. All right, tabled and pending items. I have strategic planning. Uh, we have a meeting this week. Um, so is that Wednesday. Wednesday, December 11th at 2 p.m. at the ECIA building. Okay, scheduled from 2 to 4, and that's a public meeting. Is that correct? Yes. That's a little bit of work they asked us to do. They asked us to put one, three, and five years on the items that we wish to make change. Okay. All right, anything else on that? Then we have some items that are tabled to uh, work session today. All right. Um, Next item on the agenda is item 12, public comments. At this time, anyone may address the board on matters of which are of concern to that person, which are not agenda items. Please go to the podium, state your name and home address. Please be aware that the board is limited in their ability to respond to such inquiries, and Iowa Code prohibits the board from deliberating or acting on items not appearing on the agenda. So if anyone would like to do that, please feel free to approach the podium. Seeing none. Make a motion to recess. There's a motion to recess. Is there a second? Second. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Try to limit it to five minutes. Five minutes. Get back on track here. <laughs> 